Hello and welcome everyone to the presentation on functional organization, which will be presented by Caleb Davidson, Keith Higby, Corbin Lenning, Serene Matheson, and Bud Wortham. According to Usmani, the definition of a functional organization structure is a hierarchical organization structure wherein people are grouped as per their area of specialization. What does that mean? I broke down functional organization into three topics I'd like to talk about. Hierarchical organization, group by specialization, and management. Hierarchical organization is taking a company and an organization and breaking it down by rankings, thus creating a hierarchy. Something that's important to know is when we create a group we're taking people that have the same skills as one another and grouping them together. And that is including the manager, the team members, and team leaders that will be within that organization. Something important about management, though, is the team members of one specific group will only report to the manager of their group and not another group. In this diagram we can see what I've been talking about. Uh, CEO has a bunch of departments underneath it, human resources, corporate marketing, and so forth. And beneath them we have the department manager, the team leaders, and the team members. And the team members will only report to their team leaders of that same department. So team members of corporate marketing would not report to the team leaders of human resources. A great example of this is a department stores. Each store has a customer service department, sales department, and finance department. Each of these departments specialize in one skill, like customer service. And the members in that department will specialize in that same skill. Hello, my name is Caleb Davidson, and I will be taking you through a short demonstration of what functional organization would look like. In functional organization, members are, the organization is organized by functions. Members are placed according to their ability. The supervisor has direct relevant experience to that function. And there is a clear single direct manager over every individual. You can imagine functional organization as being different silos within the organization. If you take, for example, a general store, we could have four different departments such as hardware, clothing, electronics, and grocery. These four different departments would be completely separated from each other. There would be no communication between them and the direct line of management would be vertical within the silo. Each silo would represent a different area of expertise. Those in the hardware department would know about hardware and they would know a lot about the hardware but not very much about grocery. This would lead to specialization, which can lead to an increase in productivity. It would also make the job of a project manager difficult as he tries to integrate across departments. Hello everyone, my name is Bud Wortham and I'm going to go ahead and discuss some of the benefits that come along with functional organization. Corbin and Caleb Wynn did a great job in giving us a definition and some examples, and they actually mentioned some of the benefits. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and split the benefits into two topics. The first topic is the organizational benefits, and the second one is employee benefits. There are many organizational benefits that come along with functional organization. One of these benefits is that there's better cooperation and communication, and that they're just amazing, but only within the department. As Caleb mentioned, communication between the departments is a little lacking. Another thing, because everyone is specialized, it gives a higher degree of performance and it also increases efficiency. Now, since everyone specializes and does one thing, 
that also gives accountability for work. And since you're only communicating to the manager and not with other departments, it has reduced number of communication channels. And there's also new duplication of work because only one person does a specific thing or one department does a specific thing. Now, functional organization has some great employee benefits. Because everything is so specialized and down to certain things, it gives employees a great job security. And with that job security, they can perform well without any fear of anything happening. And with this lack of fear, with the job security, it creates loyalty to the company. And that also helps the employee see a career path or a way to grow because everything goes up. Hi, my name is Keith Higby, and I'll be talking about the disadvantages and costs of functional organizations. Uh, working in such an organization, the work actually may start to feel repetitive and monotonous. Uh, employees are often stuck doing their assigned tasks and functions, uh, and, and they have no chance to venture outside the normal, experience something new. They have no chance to gain new skills and move on to something else. Um, this type of organi organization also tends to have poor coordination and communications with other organizational departments. Uh, so the finance department concentrates on finance, marketing concentrates on marketing, etc. Um, and so they tend to get locked in their own goals with and don't really think too much or concern themselves with organizational goals. And this kind of leads into the next point here. Departments become self-centered. And so what this means is that staff within a department begin to not really care what goes on outside the, their department. They work for their own department, even though the reality is they work for their organi overall organization. And the next po two points here are related. Because of the bureaucratic headache, decisions are slow. And because of the rigid structure of the organi functional organization, changes are slow. So that slow nature can often be felt at the employee level. The costs of a functional organization are felt in a few different ways. One is that highly skilled employees tend to cost more. And this obviously goes without saying for most organizations, but if you want the best, then be prepared to pay for it. Also, the lack of employee enthusiasm and morale, uh, it can lead to a loss in productivity, which obviously will have, end up costing the organization as products and services are not being rendered as expected. And finally, the slow decision-making process at the functional manager level can cost the organization. An example of this may be failing to purchase parts while costs are low, only to need the parts later, and they are more expensive. Hi everyone, my name is Serene Matheson, and I'm gonna be talking about the effectiveness um, and then the recommendations for use for the functional organizational um, structure. So first of all, um, because the teams are not accountable to each other, it tends to make it a little more bureaucratic and tends to take a little bit longer um, since they share the decision-making which is not always a plus. Um, there tends to be a lot of communication problems because of the separation in the departments, um, but it does create specialists because they're all put together. They tend to get a little more done because they're all within their area of expertise. There's also quite a bit of decision-making difficulties, once again, because they're all separated. Um, but once it comes back to the head and the manager, then it tends to get a little more productive. So I would say overall, it's a fairly effective method to use, um, yet at the same time, there tends to be some issues just because of how separated the different teams are. My recommendation for when to use functional organization would definitely be in relatively large companies where it won't have as much of an effect that they are so separated because there's going to be a more stable environment and there's not going to be a bunch of people moving in and out and changing up the um, teamwork set because of the way that it's set up and they have specialized tax task set in each area of expertise um, that stable requirement is much more necessary because they need to be able to keep steady um, steady flow of work
Thank you everyone for listening to our presentation on functional organization. Here are the questions that we submitted for the quiz. Uh, we do also have them listed in the slideshow that is also posted on the discussion board if you'd like to go through our notes. All right, thank you everyone and good luck on the quiz.